No more Black Tears podcast, man. We back at the next light. You know what I'm saying? We doing it for the people. Vertiz, let the people know what we're working with today. Yeah, man. You know, we brought Week of Sports back, y'all, man. I hope y'all had a great week, man. We're going to get into it in a little bit. And all happened in the week. It was good, people. So, we've been talking about the last year about a lot of these athletes gambling. So, we know that opening day in baseball was this week. So, to all the baseball fans, congratulations. But Otani, right before opening week, it, he's been involved in a gambling um, scandal. So, apparently, his interpreter slash manager um, basically got fired by the Dodgers, and they reported that he was stealing money. It was later reported that, nah, he was gambling on games. So, they did an investigation, a quick little investigation to find out that Otani had anything to do with it. <clears throat> Otani basically said in his little press conference, nah, he was stealing money from me and using that money to gamble. I've never betted on baseball games. Seeds, man, what do you think about this Otani situation? I mean, I believe him. It's like he has so much money, it's like why risk it and take a chance? And then when you have somebody that works under you, it's really easy to slip things out. So, I mean, it's a significant, significant amount of money. So, I mean, it's easy to trace. Um, Made the right move. He had, in this position, he had too much to lose to shit like gambling. I don't think he's going to do that. Yeah, I, I I believe he did it because the dude was more than just his interpreter. Like, that, that was his friend. Pretty much, that's one of his best friends, too. And that's the reason why he hired him to be his interpreter. Because we didn't know, well, I know, I just want to speak for myself. I didn't know, he, Otani knows how to speak English. But the whole time last year and the year before or, or whatnot, he had the interpreter. Like we, I didn't know he didn't know how to speak English, but he knows how to speak English. So technically, he doesn't even need the interpreter. So the interpreter is also his best friend. I think he knew what was going on. He just trying to play dumb. Single. Yeah, like, and then you seeing him at different games and things like that. He has no connection to, and then you can see him when things happen. Like, man, he was making parlays, man. I, that's my take on it. They they got a whole lot of investigations. They said the investigation probably not go or not. They're not gonna be able to find out all the information until maybe after the season. So, but I, I believe he did it. You know what I'm saying? Another Pete Rose. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I don't know if he did it. I don't know if he didn't do it. I will say this: he has a lot of motivation to do it because even though he has that big contract, we talked about how he's only making two million a year for the next 10 years. So, you know, maybe he thought this was a nice way to parlay that money into something more. And gambling is becoming such a big and prominent thing now that, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like, if I was an athlete and I felt like I could give my money to you, um, C's or Rose, have y'all bet on some games for me and not get caught, yeah, i do that shit. But to your point, Rose, man, I mean, I feel like a lot of people who don't watch baseball like that felt like, you got an interpreter. You can't speak English. Or you speak very limited English. I watched the press conference. He seemed like he blew it enough to me. <laughs> you know, but hey, maybe he could be like LeBron. I just want to throw some money to my homeboy and give him a job that he really don't need, man. But, man, moving on to, like, the NBA in gambling. So we basically had two of these situations within, like, a week and a half span. So for those who know Michael Porter Jr., his, his younger brother, who played for the Raptors. Um, he came from like the G League. He's like one of those 10th through 12th guys on the bench. So he ain't even one of the first dudes come off the bench. He's like that end, that end guy on the bench. <clears throat> He's been caught up with, with, with another draft scandal with, I think, FanDuel. And basically... I think it was DraftKings. I'm not sure. So basically, in, in, both, in both instances, um, they looked at his minutes he played, all his over and unders, and he hit the unders in, in both times. But 
they looked at it and was like, hold on, why is this the biggest payout we've had all season for this app? And they literally looked at it, and one week it was like, okay, cool, he hit the under, there's a big payout. Then the next week, it's like he plays 25 minutes, and the next thing you know, it's like, okay, cool. Then, then the next game, he hits the under again, there's another big payout. And the reason why he left both games, one time was, I think, like a sprained wrist, but then one time was just a mysterious illness. Like, he played five minutes, and he just said, yeah, I just wasn't feeling well. And one was like a, a eye injury. That's what it was. One, the first one was an eye injury, and the second one was just a mysterious illness. Rose, man, we back with the gamble. Man, what you think about the situation? Yeah, man. That one is more fishier than the Otani one because it's like you, you, you bid the, you, you didn't get the, you, you. Everybody got the under, and then one of the next games, like he only, he only played like maybe three, four, or five minutes. The next game, you played 25, and you scored 21 points. Like, so you can play. He can play. So it's like, okay, so you can play, but it's, it's just kind of fishy, man. But And then it makes it seem like – and then your brother is Michael Porter Jr. I didn't know that until um, I, I started looking into it a little deeper because they don't look alike so much <laughs> they both, other than they both light-skinned. You know what I'm saying? But, like, your brother just won the championship last year, and so – you just trying to make up some of the you trying to, so you trying to get up over him. You trying to make some extra money because because your brother you jealous of your brother or something. I don't know what's going on, man. It just a lot. It just seemed fishy, man. But I I think he did it too. Man, he ain't really See, like, he ain't really like his contract, man. So he's like, let me let me make these parlays, man. You know, it's weird and it's weird how he keeps getting out the game. So it's like. Eye injury, mysterious illness. Then wasn't one like a third one, a sprain or something. A reactivation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reactivation. So it's like, man, he's not. He's not a high scorer, not scoring all the time. He's not playing that much. So I mean, like, he's probably looking at it like, hey, I ain't gonna get caught. Let me just make these plays. So. Yeah, man. I think he did it. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna be real. I, I, I. To me, I was talking to TTK about this. Man, this, this who these are people who I think are gonna be doing it, man. These fringe players who don't make a lot of money, who probably can't really impact the game to be real on a game in a game out basis. So, like, yeah, I believe he did it because, bro, you're not making that much money. You probably feel like you're not gonna be able to impact the game. Plus, you're not even better on the game itself because you know you can't impact it. You just literally bet on just your your personal over and under, which you could easily control. And I'm just going to say this right here. With the fact that gambling is becoming so frequent and so easy and accessible, you can do it on your phone. Like, this is just something that we're going to have to deal with in sports. We're going to have to deal with the thought that it's going to be athletes that's going to think that's going to try to gamble. We saw this with Calvin Ridley. Like, Calvin Ridley just signed, what, a $95 million deal, y'all? Yeah. And, and, he, and he gambled away a season of his career for fifteen hundred dollars. So what you expect to do? Who probably only get in what a hundred thousand for the season? Uh, hey, he probably like hell yeah, man. I'll I'll put I'll put ten ten k down on the game. Man, speaking about the game though, man, moving on to the NFL. We got some rule changes that happened in this off season, and we got We got We got to give our thoughts on it, man. One 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 rule changes was the kickoff. For those who don't know. They moved it where basically um, the defenders and the people blocking will be at the 25, 35-yard line. They'll be closer to the return. The kicker's going to stay where he's going to be at. Once the ball is kicked, no one can move until after the returner catches it. For those who've seen the Arena Football League, it's going to be similar to basically how they basically do it. Then they eliminated the hip drop tackle. And the best way I can explain it, the way that it's been explained over and over on all the sports channels is when you wrap a defender around a waist or their lower ex extremities and you and you use your bo lower body to just drop to the ground, that's going to consider a hip tackle. Now, for those who might have watched the games last year, when we saw Mark Andrews, a notable player, get injured from the Ravens, and when Lamar got kind of banged up in the, in the same game, that's kind of the tackle that they're trying to get rid of. Um, C's, what you think about these rule changes? Man, it's going to be weird seeing this kickoff. So it's going to be weird seeing it after a long time. 
Um, it's gonna be a lot of punt returners that are gonna be doing some numbers. Definitely with the teams, they're gonna be doing some numbers. Um, and then with the onside kick, one extra rule is like what you're only allowed two per game now, and you have to announce it. Yeah, with the onside kick, man, you gotta announce it before you do it, and you're only allowed two. So I mean, that's gonna be crazy. The percentages are low, so it makes sense why they're getting rid of it. Um, and then the hip tackle, man, it's going to be hard to judge that, man. Like, it, it's it's really going to be hard to judge, man. I think I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it weird. Stuff is going to be different this season. I'll say that. Yeah, the only thing, it's going to be weird to see the kickoff. But I'm happy they did something, trying to do something to make it more exciting. Um, also, with the the hip tackle, they're just trying to make the offense. People people want people want to see home runs. What they say in baseball, they want they want to see the the long ball. They want to see the long ball. People want to see offense. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's, it's crazy that they keep taking things away from the defense and they're not taking anything away from the offense. But that's what that's what the game is going to, um, so we can't complain about it. Um, it's not that many hip when it what it's kind of almost like the horse car. It's, it's not that many that are those in the game, because most of them is usually head on or or when I when people are going out of bounds or it's it's not that many of those because every time I keep seeing they they keep showing the play. They keep showing the same like five plays. Like, where, where are all the rest of the plays at? Why y'all, y'all got to outlaw this? Like, we want to see more than just these five plays. You know what I'm saying? But they keep showing these same five plays. This is what it looked like. This is what it looked like. This is what it looked like. So it must not be that many of them. Nah, to be honest, man, I didn't really even see this highlighted to that Ravens game when Mark Andrews got injured. So, so, and that was one of the bigger ones. Um, so, but. A big dude like him, you got to do something to get him down. You know what I'm saying? So he basically I, ran <laughs> over you, so now you're just trying to get him down. Yeah, so – and the um, onside kit, um, I I don't really care about that, but it, I know we talked a little bit. Maybe we, we could do something different. But, man, football is going to be football. People are still going to watch it. So they can change anything they want to change. They still going to make the most money in America when it comes to sports because – Everybody want to see football. They, as long as you can still get your wig split, people go get their wig split. Uh, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, man, football's king in America, man. Um, my, my only thing, man, about both rules is the hip tackle. You know, hey, man, if you if you if you just want to see more offense and you want to handicap the defense, man, hey, Roger Goodell, owners, just come out and say that, man, and stop paying these defense players all this money, then. Like, I'm tired of seeing defense players making hundred million dollars. If basically you're saying that they don't bring no value to the game because you're making these rules where they can't do what they need to do. And then as far as the kickoff, I, I remember when kickoffs used to be exciting. I remember when kickoffs used to change games. Hell, Devin Hester took the Bay, the Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl just from punt returns and kick returns, bro. Like, if, 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 we, if that Chicago Bears team would have been playing in this era, they probably would have been like 4-12. and 12. One, because special teams has been taken out of the game. And two, they would not have been to play defense the way they played defense back then. So, you know, a, it, it takes three sides of the ball, man. Special teams, defense, and offense, you know, for the game to be exciting. I'm one of those, I'm one of those people that I enjoy a good defensive game. I like to see I like to see points scored. So, you know, hey man, I'm glad they changed the kickoff rules so you bring that aspect back to the game. That's exciting. But speaking of excitement, though, we, we've had a amazing start to March Madness with crazy upsets, crazy performances by players in the men's and women's games. Cities, what have you liked so far about March Madness and what are you looking forward to? I do like the upsets that happened earlier on, like, what was it, Long Beach State? That was a surprise. Not Long Beach. What the fuck was it? To my Oakland. Oakland, but Oakland, Ohio. That was a surprising game, but um besides that, man, Carolina, you let me down. Shit, what can I say? Uh NC State currently winning. They probably gonna take that. 
Same thing with Purdue. Tonight we got Houston and Duke. I got Houston going with that one. I'm surprised to see three SEC teams still in it, though, on the men's side, surprisingly. Um, I know Bama has had a good two last two seasons, um, so it's going to be interesting to see that. I think Creighton is also going to beat Tennessee out. And then with the women's, man, I can't – Iowa State, they lost, even though they lost, but that first game, I can't think of her name, but literally dropped 40. I saw her in a couple of plays on the first two games. She can hoop. She can hoop. Um, it just so goes to show you how much depth there is with the women's. Um, so South Carolina's proud. Of that. I'm still picking South Carolina. Stanford, I thought would be a problem, but they're actually losing to NC State right now on the women's side. And then, uh, man, back on the men's, man, um, UConn looking stronger. Like they're rated number. They're rated high. I think UConn is actually going to do some shit. Yeah, man. The UConn one, um, I didn't really keep up with them. I had them winning a lot of my brackets. Um, and I'm glad I did because these first couple games they played, they look amazing. Like, they look like no one's going to come close to them. As far as upsets go, um, you touched on the Oakland one, so I'm going to touch more on the Alabama one. Like, you know, my, my brother TTK was like, yeah, Bama got a good squad. They got good players. But to see them beat North Carolina, who got a lot of talent, they're number one seed, I was kind of shocked by that because we haven't heard a lot about Alabama or none of their players. And it was actually a pretty exciting, good game. The, you know, um, their star player, the tall little white boy they got, had like 27 points, had a good fourth quarter. Like, I saw the second half of the game. He only had like four or six points in the first half. He scored like 20 in the second half. So that was kind of exciting to watch. And then, like, for the women's, um, it was exciting to watch South Carolina play today because I didn't think nobody could hang with them. Um, but they had a very, very close game. They almost lost to um, Indiana, which, side note, man, Indiana, y'all just full of white motherfuckers, bro. Because <laughs> I, I look at the team, and it's number white bitches. Like, y'all got, like, one or two scarecrows on the team. But besides that, everyone else is just white. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, the black folks go to Chicago, man. It's right there. I, I guess so, Gary, man. Indiana, they just go to Illinois. But, yeah, no, but, you know, South Carolina, man, they look they look great, man, even though they got challenged. Like, I think South Carolina, they're going to win it all. And the reason why is because when the game got tight, they was able to buckle down and rely on their defense. And mo- most of the time in sports, when you got a def- when you can play defense, that's gonna hold you down. So it was impressive to watch them do their thing. I'm looking forward to the LSU and UCLA L game game tonight. That's gonna be exciting to watch. And then the last men's game that I'm excited, excited to look forward to um, before we get to the final four is Duke and Houston, man. Because you know, one, can Duke get further than North Carolina? And two, Houston's a great squad, but Duke probably is a more talented team just because they're Duke. So it'll be interesting to see how that game goes and you have been touted touted all year. Yeah, my main thing still is um the University of South Carolina. Um them girls, man, it's close to home, it's right there, it's right up the road from us. Um the, one of my uh, one of the girls, uh, she's a freshman and she actually from Columbia, Malaysia um Fluwale, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to her, you know what I'm saying? She been she was balling last um was a Sunday when they played in North Carolina, she was doing her thing. Like she, she was, she was, she was, she was tearing up girls up in the first half. Um, but shout out to her, man. Hope she does great things. You know what I'm saying? Also the, um, the other freshman, Pow Pow, um, and, and, the, and Cardoza, you know what I'm saying? She got to, she got to stand up big for, for them to take it all the way. They got to, they got to go big because lots of their players are young. So, but, Shout out, shout out to them, man. And that's that's the people I want to see. That's that's the only game I watched all all this March Madness. I, and I'm gonna watch them. Uh, I think they play Sunday. I'm gonna watch them again on Sunday. They play. Um, I want to say Oregon State or something like that. I don't know who they play. I th- yeah, I think it's Oregon State they play. Yeah, I think they play Oregon State. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch them. Um, Stanford, they about to lose. It'll be it'll be funny if they do come back. 
But NC State on the girls and the girls, girls and the men's side is wild. They're both about to make it to the Elite Eight. At the same time. At the same time. That's about to win at the same fucking time. Yeah, that's wild. You know what I'm saying? They playing at the same time and they probably both about to win. And they both gonna be upsets. That's gonna be that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there. Um but I'm 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 excited. I wanna see Connecticut and doggone Duke play that they play tomorrow. Connecticut and Duke. And then I wanna see UConn win. Not I said Connecticut. Yeah, Connecticut, yeah. I wanna see UConn win and I wanna see USC win. So then they can play each other. Cause they um so we can see Paige play against Juju. That'd be an amazing matchup. They're not gonna guard each other, but those are two of the, the um the, the the most special players in the in the um tournament in the country. Um also Clark is she she's she's one of those, but um those girls got handles, you know what I'm saying? So I wanna see those girls play. And only surprise I was, I was surprised Alabama beat North Carolina because the only reason I was surprised because People made it such a big deal about age when Kentucky lost, when Oakland beat Kentucky. Oh, they got these grown <laughs> men playing these young boys, this, this, and that. I'm like, man, nobody care about that. That niggas was grown, though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that nigga looked older than you, bro. That nigga, that nigga I, I need to check his ID. Yeah, but I tried to you know, I tried to look up for his age. I couldn't find it. Exactly, a nigga forty five years old playing against <laughs> kids, bro. Yeah, his son on the team man. with the plane. Yeah, that's that grown man strip. <laughs> Yeah, but but uh, see that that teach y'all young boys, man. <laughs> put put them guns down and and, and learn how to squabble. <laughs> hey man, talking about big time plays in March Madness, man. We really didn't even touch on Caitlin Clark like that. She's been one of the most sensational plays the last two years. Like, she definitely gonna do a thing, man. So sensational that Ice Cube offered her five million dollars to play in ten games in the Big Three. There's some people who think this is a great move. There's a lot of people from Kenya Martin and players from the WBA who think it's a terrible move. Seeds, do you think this is a good move for Caitlin Clark? And and, if, and if, do you think she should take it? I mean, shit, that's when you got to go look at the bank account, look at the NIL deals and shit and say, is it even worth my time? But on Ice Cube, on the, the big threes, it's great publicity because it's going to bring – a whole nother audience. A lot of people that weren't watching it before might actually start watching. Like, oh, Caitlin Clark's going to play. I might actually check it out. Um, so there's that factor. And then it's like, come on, man. Ten games, five minutes for ten games, man. That ain't even half a season. It's probably, what, a quarter of a season, if that? Yeah, I don't know about the WNBA, but I think it's a good – I think she should do it. She 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 go to, She's not going to score a lot of points. She might hit a couple of four point shots, but it's gonna be ugly for her because she ain't got no handle. The only, only thing she could do is shoot. But she is she she has size, but only thing she can do is shoot. She can catch and shoot. So if 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 she's on my team, all I'm saying, screen, catch and shoot. Come off the screen, catch and shoot. You don't do anything else. And the, but the good thing about the big three is it's only half court, so you can do that. So uh, it's kind of going to be more of a don't – take it like an exhibition. Don't take it like an actual league thing. Yeah. And then the only controversy I heard was, like, it might overlap with the WNBA it, 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 it does. So that's the only problem is, like – It does. If she gets – you know, the focus should be the league, but it's like, hey, take these one or two games, you might be able to work something out. But, know? yeah, but Ice Cube, he's doing it. It's, it's all the, Ice Cube's a business – a business mind and a business person. That's all this is. It's a business move. Yeah. As far as basketball, again, nothing to do with basketball. It's just a business move. So I will. I want her to do it just so Ice Cube can be more successful in his big three because he's a solid dude. He's always stood on business, and I salute him. Man, the words of Bobby Boucher, daddy from Waterboy. Take the money, dummy! Like, Caitlin, this is five million dollars. Like the most y'all get in WBA for a season, I think it's like seven thousand fifty dollars. And I don't think you're gonna get that as rookie. You probably gonna get like less than five hundred. You be getting five hundred thousand dollars a game for ten games of work. Man, take that check. 
you know, bring some more notoriety to the, to the big three because, you know, no offense, it's a lot of white people that love you, Caitlin Clark. It's going to tune into the big three. And that's what Ice Cube Big Three lead, lead man. It need more eyes, man. We, we, we talked about how, you know, he talked about how Adam Silver in the NBA was trying to plot against him. And they wasn't trying to get the promotion he needed, man. And for those who want to say hating hey, ass shit, like, man, why you didn't get this opportunity to a black girl and this and that? Man, we a pro black pal pie. So I, I, I ain't never going to get mad if Angel Reese would have got this opportunity or Angel Wilson would have got this opportunity. But I'm going to say this right here, and I'm just going to be realistic. If you would say the most popular female basketball player in the country right now is Caitlin Clark. If you ask if you ask just anybody on the street, it's gonna be her. But if you ask a black person, you're yeah. gonna say Angel Reese. Yeah. So like if you just ask a regular person that doesn't even keep up with the sport, they are gonna say her name because she's all her name's being mentioned. So like you said about Ice Cube being a business man, like literally that's what that's why he did this. I'm gonna get the press that's gonna bring the most eyes to my league because I'm trying to grow my league to be successful. But um, moving on to TNT, y'all. Tears or no tears. I don't mind. Boom. So early this week, man, there was some news that came out of Maryland that, to be honest, man, I had to check it multiple times to see if it was even real. So the little Maryland bridge collapsed after this ship basically hit it. But when you watch the video, it's just so crazy because it's just, it's, it's going one way, then it makes a sharp turn. And it hits one of the poles, and then it just the bridge just basically just disintegrates into the water. And there was apparently people working on the bridge, they fell into the water. They said originally there was some cars on the bridge that fell into the water, but then there was reports that there was no cars on the bridge. Um, last that we checked, it's four people that haven't been found. They rescue, I want to say two to three other people. So, you know, thank God for them that they've been rescued. And, you know, prayers out to the four people who haven't been rescued yet, you know, and we'll, we'll see what happened with them. See, it's tears or no tears? Man, it's tears, man, because it's, it's going to have bigger implications than just recipes for people who died, but it's going to have bigger implications economically, politically, and other reasons. It's just like, the funny thing is, it's just like it took out one of the biggest bridges in Baltimore. So it's like it's going to affect the port automatically. So a lot of shit going in and out of the country is going to be delayed or have to go to some other port. Then it's like it's a major highway in Baltimore just to get to one side. So now you got to drive. If you live anywhere around bridges, literally we're somewhere like Maryland, Virginia, you literally have to drive all the fucking way around just to get somewhere, just to take one bridge, just to get all the way around. Right? And, well, hey, I can take this bridge or I can take that bridge. You can't anymore. And then, man, it's like, it's crazy how the video happened. It's like, you see the lights literally go off on a boat. For a ship that large, that shit is unusual because you usually have backup generators Shit like that. So, I mean, it's kind of weird how to, how to shit happen. Hey, see, you, you just said something. Me and me and Rose talked about something. Week. But a ship that large, and you might know more about this, does the Maryland Bridge, is it one of those bridges that open up? Is it, a, it wasn't a It should have had enough room. So, so, to so, where? so, so it should have been able to make it underneath that. Yeah, it okay. would have it, it would have made it. I remember we talked about it, but it would have made it if it didn't make that. Shop turn? Because the reason why it didn't make it because it hit the pillar. But if it if it went through the right spot, it was going. It had enough room because the ships go through there every day. And it's it was too okay. late because the power cut off at like one forty something in the morning. Then you see black smoke from an engine like that. That shit don't normally happen like that either. So it's like it's a couple of things that went went wrong. And as time goes on, you'll see a lot of shit come out. I mean, that's gonna be ships that large move slow as fuck. We're talking nine nautical miles. That's fucking slow. You should have had. It takes a lot to turn a boat like that, but at the same time, you have more than enough time to make those fucking changes. I hear you keep talking about we got more than enough time things like this is before we, before we get into it. So 
I've been seeing a lot of conspiracy theorists going on. <laughs> what you think about all that? I know, um, that, I know, I know. This ain't the top of this tears, no tears. But what you think about that? This, it's, it's a real, this is real. It, um, they did that shit because they want us to spend. You heard them saying we're gonna spend more tax dollars, so it's gonna be another couple billion added on to the debt, and then also, who's to say it's some shit going on maybe with the Port of Maryland? Because that ship was supposed to go to, all the way to Sri Lanka. So from the East Coast all the way to damn near India, all the way to who the hell knows what pro- type of products were going over there. Who's to say, man? And then also, check the insurance. We check the insurance tabs for the inspections. They said this boat had problems a months ago. A week. Who the fuck knows, man? Put your tinfoil hat on. I'm going to take my shit off real quick. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, I, I got tears, man, because you know pe- people, you know, lost their lives. I also got tears because you might not remember this. Um, sees we was in Savannah years ago when we was driving over the bridge, and I told you like, yeah, nigga, this one of my fears, man. I don't like going over bridges because I, I I read something that like over two hundred something bridges in America a year, like basically because how worn they are, just collapse. And like, so whenever I'm on a bridge that, that's over a body of water, I'm like, nah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna drop this shit. <laughs> cause, cause I'm afraid I'm gonna hit that one patch in the bridge that's been driven over a million and two times and it can't take that million a third time and my car's gonna just plummet into the water. Um, so if cars did fall into it, that's a scary, that's a scary feeling. Oh shit, there was one truck that barely fucking made it. Like he yeah, literally was. Yeah. It looked like he was hauling ass just to get across. He was like, oh, nah. Y'all ain't gonna get me. And that's a scary feeling. Now, for the people that wasn't even in cars, me and Rose talked, that's a scary feeling because that's such a long drop. So you going from such a high altitude and falling into the water. And for those who know how that works, a lot of times when you hit the water that hard, people say it's like hitting bricks. So when you hit the water, you automatically most times become unconscious. So that's why it's kind of even more tragic because a lot of people, unfortunately, if they haven't been found, they probably are dead. Yeah, one more thing to consider is you're falling with stuff. You're falling with. So like, let's say the bridge collapses. You don't know which way you're going to fall. The pillar or metal could fall on top of you. Yeah, all these all these materials fall on top of you too, man. And as far as what Rose said about the conspiracy theories, I'm going to be real, man. As I get older, man, I, I distrust the government more and more. Like, I, I I I read something where they they have been wanting to get a new bridge for two three years now. What what's a better way to get a new bridge than to set some shit up where basically the bridge collapses and guess what? Now we can come to the taxpayers and be like, well we need y'all money because we need a new bridge and the taxpayers be like, you know they so they mourning the tragedy. They like yeah we y'all give y'all more money, especially and I don't know the people that the four people that's missing, but I'm just gonna say this man in America. When you got when you got brown and black lives, it's different, bro. And in some of these jobs that we're talking about, these are black and brown people doing these jobs, man. So if they knew that it was gonna be no white people that was gonna be harmed in the making of this um conspiracy, they probably like thumbs up. Yeah, man. I just got one question, man. Where was Spider Man at? <laughs> in New York. Cause it, but he should have been able to make it there and, and be able to shoot some shoot some. He can't fly. Oh, you, oh, you want Miles Morales? You want Black Spider Man to be in Maryland? Yeah, because he could he could he could he could have shot some dog on some webs and the black to, mayor, black governor to stop some of the from the bridge to fall. He could have he could have grabbed those guys, man. Dog, man, we we in the wrong universe. But on a more serious note, but. I ain't got no tears, man, because things happen like this all the time. Um, people people die, yes, but I don't think it was a conspiracy. It, it hit the pillar, you know what I'm saying? For them to, that's a, it was a large ship. And then at first, I thought the whole bridge fell. That's the whole bridge didn't even fall. Like part, the middle part of the bridge fell, but some of the bridge is still standing. So, but. Man, I ain't I ain't got no tears for it, man. But hey, Rose, quick question: How you felt about people posting online and commenting when they talk when they show show the mayor of Maryland and they said this is the deed 
E. Iman. Yeah, it, um, it, and when I first seen D. E. I. Mayor, I thought it was diversion, inclusion, and, and, and I thought I thought that's what D. I. meant, but it, it doesn't mean that. It means, um, was it directly elected incumbent? It yeah, means, it, it means nigger. <laughs> directly, he corrected them. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what it means. But uh, basically, yeah, yeah. This, this black MF. <laughs> hey, you can't say he. But, he was a city council, so I mean. Yeah, but he 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 doing his job, but but it's like oh he he showed up he ain't show up in no suit, but brother man you you you, you know you can't go around all these white folks with with, with an afro, but shout out to him no more black tears, I, I feel him though but um he was sharp though I I I don't I don't have a problem with what was sharp. I don't have a problem with that. I'm glad that he correcting the people, but um, I I just wish when they say DEA, I mean DEI, that they would have they would have spilt the words out because when I first seen it, cause we we talked about the DEI or whatnot a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about a whole different meaning, diversity, and I thought the same thing you thought was like yeah, so. So that's what I thought when it was so now when they said, "Oh no, nah, they that mean yeah the the." The, I will be honest. The with ninja. You, but when I saw it though, I immediately said, "Y'all doing it again, white people? Yeah. Y'all trying to find another way to say nigger without saying nigger." Yeah, but they knew what they was doing though. <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing because they knew that because that cause all of us thought the same thing at first. I don't know about C's. I don't know. I can speak for myself. You said you just thought. What, what about you, C? Have you seen it? DEI hired. Come, come on. Yeah, these that's white right. folks. Come on, <laughs> these white folks be on that bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, so so that's why I'm like, I'm like, dog. How, how the fuck is a mayor gonna be a DEI hire? How yeah. the fuck do you, you were elected, motherfucker? Like, what you mean? Like, yeah, so fuck I was elected, man. So that was wild, but um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But shot to him, he stood his own, and he he said, no, this ain't about this, and it's about the people that were lost. And, and um, shot to the people that were lost. It was um, they showed two pictures of the the guys that were lost that. The six that were missing for the um the, for two days, and and both of them were, were um like Vertiza said, black and brown people um to be more specific, they were Hispanic males. Um, one of them had six kids, and one of them had two kids, so they were fathers. And if we know uh, if, if if you if you do your research or know a lot of Hispanic males, most of them when they have Good job like that, and they're and they're working. Most of them, they take care of their kids. So, right, right. so for them to um for that their family to lose their father, the the head of their household. Um, because most of them women don't work; they stay at home. So I don't I don't know I don't know their situations if they was married or whatnot. But lots of times they they are married, and the, the man works, the woman stays at home, take care of the kids, and things like that. So for them to lose their breadwinner. Um, it's a sad situation. So, um, prayers and, and many lives get affected when one tragedy hits. So, yeah, that's something we have to keep keep in mind, man. I ain't got no tears, but I got prayers. But keep it in mind. Let's get let's let's go and get two minds in one situation. So, Rose sent me something where these two conjoined twins got made to this dude. Well, let me rephrase it. One of the conjoined twin sisters married this dude. Bro, I really don't even know how to explain this shit, bro. Like, Rosé, man, what, what, what's, like, what, what you think? Yeah, so, so it's, it's a conjoined twin. It's so that they got joined from, like, the, 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 the chest. So they have separate brains. So they think separately. They could, each one of them control one half of the body. So they got skills. Cause one person controls one arm, one person controls the other arm, one person controls one leg, one person controls the other leg. They got they got one pussy though, right? But they only got one um, vagina. Yes. So one asshole. And they only got one um, um, G spot. So he got four holes to choose from. No, he yeah. got because you got you got oh you got, you got you got two heads. You got, you got, you got the, yeah, two, two heads better than one. Two heads are always better than one. <laughs> Two heads are always better than one, but I don't know if we want to get that. If we want to get that, 
I don't I don't think they both can suck at the same time. Hey man. But but if, if it but it, but if his dick I, was they can long, talk at the same time, right? I, I, no, I, but I but if it so I can get if I would get one free. But but if but if it but if too bad it wasn't a black man, because <laughs> if it was a black man, they they probably could both chop on it at the same time. But <laughs> but, <laughs> but but what but what what what's your, what's your thoughts? Tears, no tears, we're teasing. I know tears. <laughs> It's a crazy situation because it's like, what happens if the other conjoined twin finds a man? Like that, it's just a weird situation. Cause I'm real, it could be me, bro. It could be me, man. Like if I if I was to do some shit like this, it has to be like the movies where the conjoined twins are like basically bad as hell, and they are conjoined from like the top of their head, but they got two separate bodies. But like this, for those who watch Mega Horror Story. This is some freak shit, man. That's all I got to say, man. No tears. Man, I was trying to be serious. Fuck. Man, I was trying to be serious, bro. On a serious note, though. I ain't got no tears. On a serious note, though. Basically something they can't control, you know, for the most part. Because, you know, they failed surgeries, splitting people in half and that type of thing. They're not at the point to where they can go their separate ways. Yeah, the, the parents should have decided which one they wanted to live at birth and cut the baby in half and just and just let the, let the one they wanted to live live. As far as a man, it could be me, man. Because it's like, I want to go on a date with my man. I want to go on a date with my man. I was supposed to smash tonight with my man. I'm like, no. You, you had the last week. I can't, man. No. Yeah, no my, tears. my thing is, I, I got tears because, like, they got two different brands, so Charlotte, she be like, she can start hating on her sister. Like, no, <laughs> I, I don't want to be F tonight. <laughs> I, I, I got a date, and so the thing about it, like, she only married technically one of them. Exactly. So, so do you have to consent of both to fuck? I don't know. So, but like, so, uh, so, so like, what? Both of them, boys. what? A, so, he should have married just both of them. That would have been the best thing to do. Like, it's like, cause there's no way. Like, I'm not about to marry one of you, but y'all sharing, y'all, y'all sharing the most important part of the marriage. Bro, can I say something that we haven't talked uh, about? Uh, unless, unless Here they, say, they say, they say, they say, they say, okay, I'll marry you, but only, only sexual contact I can do is, is head. Fuck that, I marry you. But can I say something we haven't talked about? This thing is in a fucked up situation. Because if for, the, for any man who's listened who's been in an argument with one man, that's just already hard. When he gets in an argument with his wife, he's going to argue with two bitches now. Because the sister nine times the ten is going to join in. So now you're arguing with two bitches, bruh. Couldn't be me, man. Couldn't be me. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's a crazy situation, but but shout out to him, man. I, I hope he got enough meat to, to, to last for both of them. You know what I'm saying? You see that nigga picture. <laughs> Everybody deserves love. Man, so speaking of crazy situations, man. So a mother called her daughter texting about how she ate some pussy. And she responded by pulling out a belt and saying, Y'all, this bitch playing with y'all, but I ain't playing. And she started beating her daughter ass on camera, giving her that discipline. Yeah. See, you and me talked about it. There's so many ways you can look at this situation. Some people can look at it like, hey, this is a parent saying, I don't want my daughter to be sexually active. I don't care if it was a pussy or a dick that went out of my mouth. Or you can look at it like it's a parent that I'm trying to discipline my daughter on not to be gay. Do you have tears and what's your thoughts? Man, I ain't got tears, man. Cause we don't, it, had, it seemed like there was something else going on because she basically said there was, I heard her say in the video, the mother said, yeah, I put y'all in a group chat. Cause she playing y'all. Who the fuck is she playing? Apparently, it sounds to me like all them people or girls she was messing with, maybe Sorty was a little player. She was like, you out here wilding, blah, blah, blah. So I mean, if that's the case, it's like, hey, you fucking playing with people doing this bullshit. On that hand, maybe don't do it on camera next time, you know. CPS and all this other people, you know. Yeah. I mean, but if it's from the standpoint of like she doesn't approve of her orientation or whatever, it's kind of like, hey, you deal with your house how you want to deal with it. Yeah, I ain't got no tears, man, because 
the reason why the reason why she she started getting the beat down because the daughter was started smirking and started laughing and she thought it was funny. So 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 the mama got mad and started but the the video was kind of graphic. She kind of did go overboard with the with the spanking, hit her in the face and all kind of other stuff on top of the That's head. That angry belt. swing, you know when your mom misses. Yeah, <laughs> that bitch look wrong. Bitch. Yeah, you gotta hit her in the face. That bitch look wrong. <laughs> nah, so so she went overboard, but you gotta respect your parents. You know what I'm saying? She her she was trying to handle her business, but my thing is why record it? You're trying to send a message to our friends, but who cares? Like, just take care of your kid. You know what I'm saying? Just worry about what you got going on in your home, and then don't worry about what's going on in everybody else's home. You trying to you trying to spread the word? Like, you you seem like you was jealous. That's what it. That's what it came down to. That like, oh, you think it's funny? No, I think you you was jealous because your daughter was getting in, and you can't find a man. <laughs> man. I got tears of joy, man. Like, bro, we need to go back to the '90s. That movie they had, like, but I'm a cheerleader. When they, when 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 all you had all them gay bitches and they had conversion shock therapy. Like, bro, I, I'm gonna be real, man. We, we got, hey, we we gotta stop condoning some of this shit. Now I talked to MGH and he asked me, would I rather have a gay daughter? I'm a, my, my, my bad, a gay son or a dark daughter? And I said without hesitation. I said, well, my hesitation, I'd rather have a dark daughter, man, because, bro, like, if you if you are Christian and you believe in the word and you want your and, and you want your child to be raised the right way, like, bro, hey, we gotta stop condoning some of this shit, bro. Like, we we gotta get back to where we basically be like, nah, it's not okay for you to be gay. Yes, I still love you because you my child. I still love you because you my brother. I still love you because you my sister. But no. I don't approve of this lifestyle. Basically, that is the same way that you would say, I still love my cousin that's a crackhead, but I don't approve of that lifestyle. We got to get back to being like, bro, just because I got a family member that's gay, I don't approve of the lifestyle, but I still love them. We, Especially we as black people. We too comfortable just saying, yeah, man, this my gay son. This is my gay daughter. Nah, bro, man, we, we need to stop approving that shit, man. So I'm proud of the mom. For standing on business and saying, nah, man, I'm not finna have no daughter eating pussy. Like, if you wanna suck a dick every once in a while, cool, but you ain't finna be in my house eating no pussy, talking about you eating pussy and shit like that in my motherfucking house that I pay the motherfucking bills for, that I got Bibles sitting in my motherfucking house and stuff like that, and we can go to church on Sunday and shout out this Easter fucking Sunday too. Like, nah, man, you not finna be eating no pussy on Easter Sunday, man. Nah, fuck all that, man. I'm just saying, man. Like, bro, this generation, bro, we, we, we too accepting some of that shit, man. We got to get back to it. It's like, nah, we just not saying, cool, it's okay just to suck some dick if you're a nigga and just eat some pussy if you're a bitch, bro. Eat the paint, man. Like, the paint. Shout, shout out to Jesus Christ, man, who's a black man, by the way. Eat the paint. So, so talking about pink, talking about women, and talking about sucking dick. This woman should have sucked three dicks because she took a beat down from three niggas. Apparently, the backdrop to the story, she recorded herself at a gravesite of these three brothers' dad. And she basically spit on the, the, the dad's grave and danced on it. And the three brothers called her in public and they did what any respectable children would have did. They gave her that beat down on camera. Tears and no tears. No tears. I mean, if you pissing on somebody's grave, it's like you you must really hate them. You know, that's that that's some shit you do to somebody you hate, man. You pissing on somebody's grave. It's like the utmost disrespect. So I mean, hey, family members see it, whoever it is relates it to you. Hey, I ain't got no tears, man. Let me ask quick. Anybody everybody in here seen Tales of the Hood, right? The the first one, right? Yeah. Bro, I saw that movie as a child. And I know, you know, Rose, you, you probably saw it as a teenager because you're a little bit older than us. That, that shit scared me, bro. And, and you want to know what scene scared me probably the most besides the little dog? Because I think the dog scared everyone. It was when that white cop was pissing on that grave and that black dude 
pulled him out of the grave and grabbed his dick and, and started basically pulling him into the grave and he killed him. Like, bro, I'll be honest. I'm a scary ass nigga. You can call me a bitch ass nigga, a scary ass nigga. I'm afraid to disrespect. Like, even when I go visit my grandma's graveside, I'm afraid to even step on, like, actual people's graves because I don't want to disrespect that shit, bro. Because I, like, you can't disrespect the dead, man. And when it comes to black people, I'm not trying to disrespect no other race. Man, black people, we, we, we can hate our mama. We can hate our dad. But let me tell you, man, a lot of black people don't play by their parents, man. Like, hey, especially if their parents basically did a lot for them. A lot of black men, black, black people will kill you about their parents, bro. So when you decide to say something about someone's mama just because they were sucking dick around the corner for some crap in 1997, hey, you better be careful, bro, because they, they might beat the fuck out of you, man. So, hey, man, I ain't got no problem with what these brothers did, man. You know, like, if she really did do all that, hey, y'all supposed to get down for y'all crown, man. So no tears. Yeah, I, I got tears um, for her because I don't know what she was thinking. And the thing about it, because I don't know what she was thinking. She because, lost her mind. Because, and the thing about it is, I know you had to probably be with them when, because how how they pulled up on you. They didn't pull up on you. Even though if you could have been recorded, you could have been on live. You ain't been out there that long. You don't, most people don't live right around the corner from their, from their, their people's grave site. So I believe that she... They drove there in the same car. They went out there. They made her. They made her mad, and then she did what she did. For 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 y'all to have her around y'all, and then y'all did what she did. Like I got tears for her because I don't think she deserved that. Because I don't believe that was a a random person or anything. I think they were all together. So can I ask a question? Well, let me ask two questions. One, does it make it worse or better if it's a random person or somebody that you think you cool with? I don't um I don't think I don't I don't I don't know I don't think it's, it it makes a difference but but for them to the way they 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 punch her in the face and things like that because it cause I don't think it was I don't I don't know how old she was but she looked like a, a young person so um but I believe that y'all was with her y'all made her mad and then she did it out of spite you know what I'm saying so I don't think she was like Purposely, that went out there, drove herself out there, and went out. Like, now, if she would did all that, then I might have might have think about it a little differently. But I want to say that I don't I don't know this for sure, but I feel like they was all together. Okay, so same question, y'all all together. You you visiting your your dad or mom's grave site for whatever reason, and somebody who with y'all, whether they're a friend or whatever, or just a chick you fucking, start just pissing, spitting, or just dancing on your loved one's grave site. How you react in these? Um, probably grab them, shake the shit out of them. The female, shake the shit out of them. Um, what the fuck is wrong with you? Cuss them out, all that. Initial reaction though, you know, somewhere down in your soul, you gonna get a backhand or a fucking punch. It's just like, what about you, Rose? See, see, um, if it's in normal situations, then we 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 it might be different. But just from 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 my take on the video and everything, yeah. I feel you, you I, go with them. And I feel like start disrespecting for whatever reason. I feel like they was there. They was all there doing dirt. They was all there doing dirt. They're probably all out there getting high, doing getting drinking all kind of stuff. And she did something that she regretted. So I, I don't want to say this. If, 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 if she was not in her right state of mind, like she was drunk or high, I do have a different take. But that, that, but that's how I feel that I, I feel like that's how it happened. But I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. But it just it just it just it's too coincidental for 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 me to pull up on somebody that done did that on a, on a camera and you still being around there and for her to be that young, look that young. And then just sit there and take them punches. She didn't even try to fight back. Like, that was her ride home. That's why she just stood there and took it. And I, I feel like she knew she was wrong, bro. You can't be playing with nobody great. Like, that's why you run. <laughs> <laughs> man, that bitch probably knew she could have run them three niggas, man. Them you niggas, still could try. Them niggas were like, they a runner. They a track star. Man, hey, speaking of um, athletes, man. 
Ryan Garcia, man, one of my favorite boxers in the game. Going out like a trip. So he got on social media and basically said, I'm paying for boob jobs and BBLs for any girl that DMs me. I love all women, much respect, but I just get so many women DMing me asking me for, for boob jobs and BBLs. First of all, to all you bitches in Augusta that know you need some titties and they know you need some hips and ass, y'all need to go and find Ryan Garcia's Twitter page and Instagram page and hit that nigga up. Instead of trying to ask this nigga that work at Clint Vogel or, or, or Clark and Kellogg to try to give you some money, you need to go hit that nigga up and see if he's still doing this. But, see, tears and no tears for Ryan Garcia trying to do for the community. Man, I ain't got no tears for his dumb ass, man. This is tricky, man. I mean, he ain't no worse than people's favorite rappers. I mean, they all buying BBLs anyway, so it's like, shit, you got the money to do it, shit. Do what you do, man. I mean, this shit... I mean, half these, half of these <laughs> tricks anyway, getting stuff done anyway, man. So no tears, man. Yeah, I ain't got no tears for um for 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 this trick. You know what I'm saying? He he did his thing. You know what I'm saying? That's why that's why um Davis put 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 the, the licking on him. You know what I'm saying? He he he, should, he instead of him taking the lick, he should have hit. You know what I'm saying? Hit a lick. Shout out to them. But man, if you want to be a trick, you can be a trick, man. Shout to him, but but don't you go out there putting this in the, in the atmosphere if you ain't gonna do it. <laughs> so and, and you said I want to know the limit of how many how many girls you go do this for, and, and can a girl get her tits and her butt done, or it's just one or the other? Cause I, I need some more specifics. Cause if if she DM you and say she need it done, you need to get it done. You need to get it done by the right person. <laughs> hey man, I don't want to make a racist joke, but he is like Hispanic. Hey y'all, y'all make sure like Rose just said, get them the right person. Don't go to Guatemala. I mean, <laughs> don't hey, let, he don't speak let, the language, so he could be like, hey, translate, <laughs> hey, you know, nah, doctor, bro. boom, boom, boom. Don't be go to Colombia, go to DR, hook don't them be up. in no back restaurant or Guatemala, get a get a ass and some boobs and stuff. And then wonder why you got an infection and wonder wonder why, hey bro, why is my tits leaking cocaine? <laughs> now you a drug mule, that's what it is. Hey man, for me personally, if I was Ryan Garcia and I did this, man, this to any ladies. If I ever get get that kind of money and I decide to be generous like that, just know those are my tits. That's my ass, man. Like, you make me mad. I'm taking that shit back, bro. Repo. We, we, we doing like Renna Center. The repo. That's man. some Renna titty. That's some Renna BBL. Repo. Bro. I'm taking my shit back, bro. So, hey, if you ever get some shit like that from me, hey, just know, man, you on borrow time till you fuck up, man. I hope Ryan Garcia do this. I hope these are hoes that he fucking. Cause I'm better than every hoe. Like I'm, I'm fucking every hoe before we do this, and then I'm fucking every hoe afterwards. But, hey, Ryan Garcia, man, like they, like, like they say, it ain't tricking if you got. It. And speaking of tricks and hoes and what's wrong with them, C's, Rose, what's wrong with these hoes? What's wrong with them? I'm going to need y'all to tell me what's wrong with them, man, because I got a long list of, but we ain't going to get into all that tonight. So last week when I was listening to Jonah Lucas, you know, new album that I thought was a hit, Grammy worthy. At the same time, Metro Boomin dropped the album with Future, which Metro Boomin dropped them hits. And, you know, we talked about Future when we talked about our rapper list. And, you know, for the most part, most of the tape said Future deserves to be in that top four. Well, some other names that was in that top four was Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole. Well, apparently on the new Metro Boomin and Future track, Kendrick dropped some balls where he came at Drake and J. Cole. But so did Future. Future came, dropped some balls when he came to just Drake. And so everybody was speculating, damn, why Future trying to start beef with Drake? But then we went back and listened to For All My Dogs. And we started listening, and analyzing, and realizing, well, damn, Drake made a whole album this in Future. And then social media investigators found the bitch, the quote unquote bitch that they both was fucking, that this whole beef between them two is about. 
Now, I ain't gonna lie. Me and Rose seen her. I can't speak for Rose. She looked bad. But she looked like a rent a bitch. She looked like a bitch who they paid to get her titties done and paid to get her ass and BBL in. No, nah, like Juice Man said, I, 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 I build her. I, I uh, bi- uh, Bob the Builder. My bad. You right. You right. I, I build her. <laughs> she's a, she's a builder bear bitch. <laughs> so, but she looked bad, but she's a builder bear bitch. Seeds. What, what's up with this artist rap beef and what's wrong with these hoes? Man, it, it's kind of crazy how everybody just speculates, oh, it's about some bitch or some woman. It's kind of crazy how people people paint these crazy narratives and it's like, it could be something completely else if they even have beef. So it's like, and it's see, they, didn't they just do a joint album last year or two years ago? The whole Tim's joint with the I will wait for you. That whole They did a song, not a whole album though. I mean that was a song, but that was a major hit. So it's like that shit crazy, man. Like if it's just one, it's like I can see. Come on, man. She bad, but she wasn't that bad. So I mean it's kind of it, it's crazy, man. And then like the whole, but I do like, we do need to bring back beef back to rap. It's, it makes shit exciting. So now we got the Team Avengers people joining up and shit. You know, Kendrick calling out J. Cole and Drake and shit. I like that verse, by the way. And then, I mean, let's just see the competition, man. I want to see the, you know, the big three go at it. So, quick question. Team, team Drake Future, who team you on? Team Future, man. I like J. Cole a lot, man, but... Okay, so Team Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, who team you on? Kendrick, man. I, I'm a K-Dot fan, man. J. Cole's second tier. That's that's the number two. So, those are it. What you think, Rose? Oh, I'm Team Future. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to pick a side. And, and my side, I'm, I'm, I'm staying, I'm, I'm on the east side. <laughs> I'm on the southeast side of Atlanta, like like Juice Man would say. Where, where you from? I'm from I'm I'm from Southeast Atlanta. What about Drake, J Cole, and Kendrick? If we just think like as far as lyrics, I'm a, I'm gonna go um I'm gonna go Cole and um at second I'm gonna go Kendrick and Drake's always gonna be last because he. It's it's a known fact he has ghost rider. He had ghost riders. Okay then. It's a known fact. So what you think about the rap beat? Um I think it's I think it's calculated, man. Cause future, I talked about this one time before on the pod. Future is um he might not you might not think it is because of some of the music that he makes, but he's one of the smartest person in the music industry. From my take, I think it it might be fabricated. Um it could be real, but if it's real, it's all because of um, that yellow boy. Um, oh, that yellow boy. It's all because of him because Future ain't going to get mad about no girl. Drake got mad Matt about a girl. Got 10 big mamas. He ain't going to get mad about no girl. So, so it, Drake got mad because the girl that he was messing with. But, but Drake it's the same person that has a baby mama by a porn star. Future, future might have baby mamas by people that other have baby mamas, other other baby daddies, but he ain't got no baby mama by a porn star. So the dude that's that hitting porn stars raw, he has no reason to talk about you. You always gonna be second. You always gonna be second, like. You when you when you when we went to the um when you was at, when you was taking shooting shots at the, the the grassy, you always had to be second because you was in the wheelchair. So people had to push you through. <laughs> so you was always gonna be second. You was never gonna be first. Like Lil Wayne, he signed you. Yeah, Birdman, they got rich off you. You're rich. You you sold more records than anybody. You gonna have that. But he's still gonna be. He's always gonna be on that. He's always gonna be on an Eminem level. Like Eminem is one of the one one the one of the top MCs or rappers or, or artists, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's he's one of the top, but it's always gonna be that stem but gets him because he's white. It's always gonna be that stem against Drake because he's half white, light skinned, 
and he's always singing and crying in his music. So it's always gonna be that stigma against so it's always gonna be that stigma. But if you if you a fan, you a fan. But me, I I, I say this all the time. I'm a I'm a future fan. And people say what well, people now people okay, I understand why you're a future fan, but back in the day people said you're a future fan. He always rap about this, this, this. I said, no, he raps about love music. I remember I remember Vertine said, Why you like future so much? I said, because he he just does so much. He he said, but he always raps about this and this. I said, no, he 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 has love songs. Man, I, I still think that too. And, and, and you said, and you was like, no, he doesn't. I said, I can I can put, I can send you a whole playlist of love songs. He's like, no, you can't. And I, but I did it though. And I, and I said, it was about 15, 20 love songs. I, and you was like, oh, well, he does. Love is a love songs is, is a is a very very word. Yeah. So, but man, shout shout out the future man. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying. He he has um one of the longest playlists on on my phone. You know what I'm saying. I can as as far as, as playlists on my phone, just one artist. He's got one of the longest ones on my phone. He's um, but shout out to him, man. I'm 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 team future all day long. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to him. Yeah, man. Um, first of all, man, um, the Drake future beef, man. Yeah, that's just some whole shit, bro. Like, I'm gonna take it on face value. I'm not even gonna take it as it's a marketing ploy. I'm gonna take it on face value. This shit is about a bitch. That's some whole shit, bro. We 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 beefing over a bitch. We beefing over bitches for the streets. Like, come on, man. And we talked about it for the pod. I respect Future in the sense of I don't think he's beefing over the bitch. I think he's beefing over the fact of nigga, did you really make a whole album about me crying over this bitch, saying how I slimed you out and did all this other stuff? So like from that standpoint, Drake, bro, you you wrong, bro. You made a whole album coming at Future about not your girl, not your side chick. Just some, just some thing that you just fucked in the hotel on, on a Tuesday night because he fucked her too, and she probably was like, you know, probably told people Future fucked me better, and I'll be honest, Future probably did. He got nine baby mamas. He probably did fuck that bitch better. So are we turning up on a Tuesday? And also, um, is Drake the whole of the week? Yeah, nah, nah. He got, he got to be whole of the week for that, man. Cause you, you can't make a whole album. This and a nigga just because of the bitch. As far as the Drake, Kendrick, and Cole, I mean, bro, I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm ready for that shit, man. That's what rap need, man. We we need some rap beef, man. We need we need the top three MCs to go at it because at the end of the day, like you was hinting at on um, Rose, lyrically, you can say Kendrick's the best. Storytelling wise, you can say J Cole's the best. But and me and C's talk about this on the on, on the ride. When you sell as many records as Drake has sold and you have as many hits as he has, and the fact that he has just more number one hits than both them niggas combined, it just gets to the point where it's like, I got to have you in the conversation. Mm-hmm. And, if, and and I know I asked y'all the question, if you team who? If you ask me, bro, I'm team Drake in that situation just because of the fact of, I, I got to respect the fact that you got as many hits as Michael Jackson. Like, let's understand how great Michael Jackson was as an artist, you got as many hits as him. Like I gotta be like, yeah, bro. Drake got some Ghost Riders, but guess what, man? He he knows how to deliver the balls that his Ghost Riders writes. Like Kendrick, J Cole, whatever Drake doing, I need to do too to get as many hits as he got, man. And I love both of y'all niggas. I love listening to both of y'all music. But goddamn, this nigga Drake just he's spinning the block on y'all when it comes to hits. Yeah, but but, right, so still, I, but he's still a light skinned hoe because he crying over bitches. I got one thing to say. So. Is it okay to sell your soul to make these hits? You want you you swear on your soul. I I write these lyrics. I'm I'm the hardest. But if if you swear on your soul, you the hardest. You should say I'm gonna give credit to this person. He wrote this. I'm gonna give credit to this. Like R and B people, they always give credit to their people that they wrote their songs. Well, if you look up Drake songs, you know when you look at we ain't trying to we ain't trying to look it up. You R and B people, they give credit to the <laughs> way it do. Like you a rapper, you say you you this this you hard you. I'ma pull up, I'ma slime you out. Uh, I'ma pull up, I got the sticks this this. Cause Drake, he he say all this stuff. He do say all that stuff. He say all this. He do say all that stuff. So stand on it then. He need to stand on it. Stand on it. He need to stand on it. That's all I got to say. I, I feel you, man. But yeah, my last thing is, 
hey, bro. When it when it comes when it comes to when it comes to beefing on hoes, it's for all the niggas out there. Man, don't beef with your bro, bro over no hoe, bro. Like, don't beef with, don't beef with your bro over no hoe, man. Not no bitch that you finna just drop some dick off to, man. But speaking of dropping dick off, man. I got dick for sale. <laughs> I got dick for sale. <laughs> I got dick so, for sale. One of the greatest rap producers of all time. Cause we gotta say that, regardless of what's going on, we gotta say that one of the greatest rap producers of all time. Diddy, Mr. Puff Daddy. He had his house raided by the federal government for sexual for sex trafficking allegations. His sons was taken in handcuffs. We don't know if they was arrested or not, but they was taken in handcuffs. There was speculation that he was trying to flee the country. We found out that was not true. There's speculation all this stems from the fact of that he was suing Chirac and them. He sold his stock and the rest of his stock and shares in Revolt. Now, some people say that he sold it to a black man, but a black man wants to remain anonymous. I hope that part is true. And there are reports that all this stemmed from the sexual assault allegations he had last month from Cassie and other people, and that Cassie did sit down with the FBI, you know, after they settled and told them, you know, her story or whatever, and that's that's how this come, come from. And then you have people like Luke, Luke, Uncle Luke, and Shirley Knight say that this is all a ploy to attack Diddy because of his lawsuit, and two that the FBI was not in his house to find evidence. They was in his house to destroy evidence because there's a lot of powerful people that has party with Diddy and done some things in his house that they probably shouldn't have done. And apparently, this is the last thing I heard was Diddy got cameras all in his house. So anything that happened, he didn't. He recorded every single thing. So, C's, man. What do you think about the whole Diddy situation? So I got several points, man. With Puff, first of all, why the fuck did you? Why do we think it was ever okay to call this nigga Puff Daddy? Like no, bitches can call I, him. I never call him Puff Daddy. That's that what was, I'm saying. That was his, even Puff back Daddy. in the day. Back in the day, before name. he changed his name. But that was his name. Why? He he named himself that. Why the fuck? Why did anybody agree to that shit? Like like I don't know, Daddy. Name. I don't know, Daddy. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> No diddy. <laughs> no diddy. No false. No diddy. <laughs> Woo! Woo! So I mean, there's that. And we've been who who actually stayed at Bad Boy? Think name the names. All the great artists that have come through. Who stayed? Nobody stayed. So he's notoriously fucking people over on the records. But who Publicly, stayed at any any record label from they started? You know what I'm from? saying? Specifically, one executive. It's your label. You're one of the big three that fucked people over. Yeah, but all of them did that. Irv Gotti, Suge Knight, a bunch of other people. But I'm saying, did he still, he's probably the still most relevant one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's that. We've been hearing shit about him for years, though. Four years. So let, that, let's be surprised. Surprising that he got braided by the fucking Department of Homeland Security. Either somebody fucking has it out for him. I don't know who the fuck he pissed off or who he's trying to hold some shit against or who's got it out for him. But when you get raided by the fucking Department of Homeland Security, you fucked up. It's FBI raids in the Department of Homeland Security. You fucked up. Um, it's a lot of conspiracy theories, man. But like, do anybody remember when they said he blew up Kid Cudi's car or some shit over Cassie? Not what Cassidy said. Cause Cudi Cudi never said anything, but hey, if that shit happened, it, it, that's mafia shit. That shit crazy. So I mean, it's human trafficking. Anytime you get accused of human trafficking, it's just some shit. It's, hey, if somebody planted some shit on you, his name was probably on the Epstein list. You know, them people in them circles. So it's like, hey, it's a lot of people that have been quiet. It's a lot of people that have been quiet. And it's like, it's, you got a lot of people not defending them. So, I mean, you can say there's a lot of people defending them. This shit is eerily quiet. 
people are now starting to say stuff, but it was. I say, wait, sit back, wait, see what happens. Yeah, man. I spit hot fire. I spit hot fire. You asked me who the top five best rappers. <laughs> Dylan, 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 <laughs> and Dylan. We are making a band right now. Like, man. So check it, man. I don't know, Daddy, but I mean, no Diddy, but check it. I don't, I, I don't believe nothing they just say about Diddy, man. Man. Bad boy for life. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. <laughs> no diddy. Ain't taking nothing. No diddy. Hell no. Well, I can't take this nigga serious. Hell no. Nah. nah. Can't say nothing. <laughs> I can't even hold it back myself. But um. But but on for real. But I've never seen so many people be happy. But just two years ago, everybody was celebrating Diddy. Like, oh man, he he won the he won the top. You know what I'm saying? This he was on. That 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 music show, like he was America, he was America's man. He was like the um, it's not America Got Talent, but um, the one that was on Fox or or whatnot. I don't know what channel it was on, but remember when he had um, you think he got talent? You think I don't? Was it that one? I don't. It was one. But remember, he was one of the guys on there. And the one that Ted Cruz hosts? I I I don't even know why I, I can't remember what it is. I, nah, I, you're right. You pay. You pay. I don't I don't know why I, I, I didn't know the name of it, but but he was one of the guys on there, and he, his beard was always shining, and he was looking good. But everybody watched it. But to your point, Diddy, the last four five years has been a American, not just a black, an American mogul. Yeah, an icon. Like so, for the fact that. Once he started suing these people, saying that they took his and name and image like NFL teams and NBA teams, doing all this stuff. Now, now all of a sudden, nobody want to touch him. But on the strong black men are standing up for him. But all these other coons, everybody else, all these other coons on on social media, like they think it's funny. Like, oh yeah, no diddy, no diddy. I, I I was doing that. I, I try, I try, I try, I try to keep straight face, but. I can't keep straight face because, like, how y'all are positive. I know every every real dude I heard talk about it, every real dude I know said, I don't know how y'all clapping that people were raiding his crib and things like that. Because this man had put so much food on so many people's tables, including you, Mace. So you, you could say this and this is not that, Mace. But he put so much food on your table, you wouldn't be where you was if it weren't for him. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Like my uncle Luke said, that happens. Once you start buying, once you start buying that, that hand that you feed you, people start coming at you, man. I, I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for his family because he was one of one of the guys that took in people as kids and, and raised them and raised them right. You'll never hear no scandals about his kids. Other than one of them got arrested for DUI or whatnot, but that, that's that's that's, that's, that's normal. normal. That's normal. That's normal. You know what I'm saying? He like, man, I respect him as as a man, as a father. You know what I'm saying? Only thing, only thing I feel is kind of shady about what he, when they say um, he sacrificed his ex wife Kim Porter <laughs> for the Illuminati, but they wasn't together. But that's what they saying he sacrificed, but. That could be true. Maybe, maybe, maybe he 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 took the sacrifice and and, and said, "I ain't I ain't doing what you're telling me. I want you all to do." So Illuminati coming after him. That's how I feel. What's going on right now? Hey man, so uh, Cat Williams said it best, man. Sometimes Diddy gonna want to party, and you gotta tell him no. <laughs> now he did not say nothing about Diddy gonna take it. He just said you gotta tell him no. And I also heard on the Corey Hogan show, man. They told a story with cocaine. For those who know cocaine, the little R&B singer just, you know, dropped the project with a lot of West Coast artists or whatever. But basically, he told a story how Diddy took him to a gay club or whatever. And the minute he looked at Diddy like he was not uncomfortable, Diddy, I said, hey, let's get the fuck up out of here then. I say that to say this. I'm real. I think Diddy be fucking niggas in the ass. I think Diddy be getting fucked in the ass. And I'm right that. That's his that, business. But with that being said, though, with that being said, like you said, hey, I make jokes about it all the time, 
But I don't think y'all y'all also heard me defend Diddy when Cassie said the bullshit she said. Because I was the one, the first thing to be like, man, he ain't raped that bitch. Like what whatever, whatever he did to whatever he did to that bitch, that bitch was consensual the whole time. And now that the money done dried up, because she made a regular nigga, for those who want to know, she made a regular nigga. And now that she broke, because her music career was trash, now she's trying to get more money out of him. So as far as this whole sex trafficking thing, I'm be real, bro. I don't think Diddy did none of this shit, bro. I, don't, I think, like you said, Rose, you suing the wrong people that's white. You trying to own an NFL team. You and Floyd Mayweather trying to go in on an NBA team to move it to Vegas and shit. <laughs> Like, these white people don't like that shit. They see that you got influence. They see that you got power. They see that you making money moves because you making investments and stuff so you can own stuff. So they got to take you down. Now, as far as all the gay shit, yeah, man, if I give up a spin, yeah, that nigga, that nigga probably fucking niggas in the ass and ain't fucking ass. You call, you call, you calling goddamn Nori daddy on drink champs and shit. And a lot of niggas just looked at that interview and just tried to brush it off. You tell a fabulous when we gonna party. When, when, when you gonna party? <laughs> that was like we when never we, gonna party, nigga. Never gonna party. You know. Nah. So. But I will say this though, to the conspiracy theorists, and I believe there's been some crazy shit go down in Diddy House. Not no, not no like illegal type shit on his part. But like, bro, I feel like niggas and I know some people get mad. I feel like niggas like Jay Z, and I feel like niggas like Will Smith and niggas like Oprah. I mean, bitches like Oprah. And motherfuckers who basically has went to Diddy's parties and basically has decided to be part of his parties or whatever, and they entertain whatever they entertain. Like, yeah, I feel like the FBI went there to try to destroy whatever information he had. Because I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it real. I feel like most of these celebrities, once you get to that level and they have these type of mentions, most of them are gonna have hidden cameras. Throughout their house to record stuff anyway. Man, you know where the positions are. You position certain cameras like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you got so, we got you now. We got you. Sign this so, deal. So, so, so Sign this deal. Yo, he might have a, a videotape of Dwayne Martin fucking Will Smith and ass. He, he definitely got one of um <laughs> Dwayne Wade you know, get, get, and, get, and, getting and, piped down. He, he probably got he probably got something of Dwayne Wade daughter, my bad son, you know, giving somebody neck. In the bathroom. That's a shit. transformer. That's a her. <laughs> That's a transform her. Like, 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 Oprah probably got pulled, pulled a strap on and, and, and fucked to Hodge P. Henson. That's why when they did the color purple little shit. I thought, it was, I thought it was her and Gail, man. To hide nah. Now, it was Hodge P. Henson. That's why she was looking like she was uh, violating the shit when Oprah came to dap her up. Like, he probably got shit on all these motherfuckers. That's probably how did it begin in these rooms because they probably were telling these niggas straight up, like, Hey, bro, I got this tape, nigga. You won't let me get in this room or not, nigga. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sad to see this shit going on with Diddy, man. But Diddy, keep doing what you're doing, though, man. Like, keep, keep your head up, man. You know, hey, man, I'm glad you sold you start to, um, your revolt start to sewing black or whatever, man. And as far as no Diddy shit, man, that shit ain't never going to place no homo, man. Because no homo just hits better, man. But I ain't going to lie. When, when niggas do the gay shit, it is no Diddy, though, man. Because Diddy, you, you, hey, respect to you. I love you. You know, it's for what you do for the black community. But yeah, nigga, you you, you probably you probably part of the booty gang. Yeah, <laughs> I I know one of your, your your favorite rap artists said one of the most suspect lines um in 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 the history of rap. You look so good, I suck in your daddy's duck. And that, that yeah, what your boy said. Yeah, was, you you think you think Diddy wild. wrote that or did, did did Biggie write that? Nah, did he probably wrote that shit? Did he probably say You say I man, need you to say that. Hey, man, hey, hey. nah, did he probably hey, say Biggie? Man, Biggie, man. We, we, we gotta say something they wouldn't expect. That crazy. What, 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 what you think they would expect? Like, man, say some shit like that. Like it's just like when just like when Biggie said, man, like this shit don't go like two dicks touching or whatever. Diddy was like, yeah, I like that, daddy. I like that, daddy. Put, a, that in the, put that in the song. He said, he said, I, I draw so much sugar honey iced tea, I sleep on my stomach, so so I don't, I don't mess up my sheets. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was goddamn Biggie wrote that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that booty was loose. Yeah, Biggie, Biggie wrote that. That booty was loose. <laughs> you got to sleep on your stomach. You, <laughs> you sleep on your stomach when that booty loose, so you don't mess up your sheets. Hey, hey, Biggie, Biggie saw some of that shit that Diddy was doing in the 90s, man. He probably, Diddy probably seen that booty and said, tell you got a nice butt. But I'm going to keep it real with you. 
You know shit's crazy, man, real quick. Y'all, y'all know shit's crazy when Suge Knight comes to your defense, bro. What you got to say about that series? Nigga, it's Suge Knight. We don't know if this nigga lying or not. This nigga still... He got his ass with one time. time out, but he went to war with Diddy in the 90s, and he came to this nigga. It man, don't they, matter. They, they, they say that... Um, but didn't they say that he... Puff Daddy, Diddy paid Suge to... To, to get they were in on that shit together. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we need to get Probably. rid of these niggas. We need to get rid of these niggas. That's that's still some crazy ass conspiracy, man. The fact that y'all two big execs kill both of y'all biggest artists. Come on, man. Like, yeah. We gotta get rid of these niggas. These niggas get you know, too- but, but life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ser- seriously though. And then it's like it's kind of like, bro, like some people might say it's karma, and other people might say. When you piss people off, your higher ups, your handlers, when you're in Hollywood, when you're in this other world, you might. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, only people. Piss off the wrong people. Only people I know that has been to Hollywood and and stayed still ten toes down was uh, DJ Paul and Juicy J. They 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 won the Oscar. They they went to Hollywood, but they still them boys from Memphis. You know what I'm saying? They still those guys like. Because guess what? You got to visit Hollywood. You can't live in Hollywood. They live in Hollywood, though. Oh, they live in Hollywood? I thought they yeah. still was in Memphis. They, they, mo- they moved there once they got them. Also, they moved there. They was on TV shows, all kind of stuff. But they stayed trill to the grill. You know what I'm saying? But Yeah, you got to stay. You got my own business. You can't go to them bitty parties, man. Yeah, so, man. You going you gonna to see some weird shit, bro. I'm pretty sure they was at some ditty parties for... They 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 but love what Brandon T. Jackson said. Brandon T. Jackson said Denzel told him early in his career, "Hey man, you can go to these parties, but you need to leave thirty minutes for the devil show up." <laughs> yeah, but, but they never said who the devil was. <laughs> hey, that that's what I want to know. How do you know the devil ain't already at the party? <laughs> you gonna know? You gonna know? Hey, such and such pulling up. Yeah, everybody stop, turn around, we looking. But it, but, so, 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 but we all the time out. We all the level party. Earlier than we probably anticipated, and then the next day we woke up and we was like, some shit happened at the party. We was like, nigga, I'm glad I fucking left when that I left. That intuition, man. That intuition. <laughs> like, what about you, Rose? Oh, I left plenty parties and went to sleep in plenty parties too. <laughs> but but I I ain't never woke up leaking from the backside. <laughs> you ain't you ain't never. Felt your ass was sore, and somebody and you asked why, and somebody said you fell down the stairs. No, man, <laughs> no. Oh, I, I don't, I don't fell on my face before. <laughs> Thinking it was a bed. Cousin Bruce your face. Yeah, I don't, I don't fell on the I ground before. You got jumped. <laughs> I don't lost everything in my pocket. It felt like Sonic the Hedgehog. But I, but I, but I, but I ain't, but I ain't ever been abused and used. If you ever wake up and your ass sore, and did he, and did he help you up like? Don't worry, man. I'm going to take you home. What you did to me, Diddy? No, Diddy. <laughs> hey, see, he's closing thoughts. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. All I know is of some serious ass charges and the, the whole human trafficking shit. The, we know. The government knows who the fuck does it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to put my tinfoil hat real quick. The government knows who the fuck's doing it. So it's wider than their. It's bigger than just Diddy, whether he did it or not. So, fuck it. I'll say this. When the FBI gets involved, it is scary. Because nine times out of ten, I just watched a big documentary, and he didn't even get persecuted by the state. It was the FBI who ended up basically sending Vic to jail. When the FBI get involved, they got their ducks in a row. And somebody going to Somebody going to prison, man. So, you know, hopefully Diddy can avoid prison time, man. Hopefully he can stay safe, man. You know, but at the end of the day, he's still a mogul. He still put plenty of black people on, whether you want to hate or not. Someone like you, Cassie. Someone like you, Mace. Like, he still brought the world, you know, a lot of great music, um, a lot of great liquor, and a lot of great clothes and stuff. Like, Diddy... I'm going to say this and I'm going to pass it on to Rose. Diddy was probably the first person from hip hop, if you want to be real, that show other hip hop artists that guess what? You can actually own businesses and stuff. And that was to me Diddy's legacy. We don't get a Jay Z if not for a Diddy. Because Jay Z probably doesn't even think that I can be bigger than hip hop 
if he doesn't see Diddy doing all the stuff he's doing in the early 2000s. Yeah, man. I remember I used to wear polo all the time and 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 different different clothes brands. I also wore Sean John. I remember going to a gas station. I I was wearing mostly polo, and I went in the gas station. And the lady said, "Dog, what what you got on today?" I I said, "Oh, this Sean John." She said, "Oh, that's nice. That's nice." That's how big Biggie was. I mean, Diddy was. There's no other. Rap artists are black executives that have had clothes that could compare to Polo other than that dog on Sean Combs. You know what I'm saying? Facts. There's no other ones. And if you can name if you can name one, please please put it in the comments. But I can't name one. That's all I got. Yo, and it was the Ed being Rock Kim. Peace. Yeah, man, we'll catch y'all in the next light, man. We in traffic, and I'm back wide.